Good morning, Chapel Hill. We're going to go ahead and get started with a song called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look up. troubled soul, all the broken pieces that you hold, turn them over, give them up, and then watch what Jesus does, oh weary heart, oh heavy load, lay it down. of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning and welcome to you in the sanctuary and those on Facebook. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and father fi figures. I'm Barbara Arsenault, uh, Chapel Hill lay, lay leader. The <clears throat> pastor's taking some time off, but we are blessed to have our very own Abel Vega to, to present the message today. Hear now these words. We gather as children of God, rejoicing in the promise. We lift our gratitude for the loving men who have brought us the precious heart of our Heavenly Father's love. Join me in our call to worship. We give thanks to our Heavenly Father this day. For those fathers who have shown us kindness, for those who have shown us courage, for those who have shown us generosity, for those who have shown us truth, for those who have shown us compassion, for those who have shown us faith, for those who have shown us love. 
Blessed be the name of all sons and brothers and fathers who reveal a glimpse of God's loving presence on earth. Oh God, oh God you inspire your people in the ways of kindness, kindness to lift our world, our world from our power of darkness, darkness into your light and life. And life. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to the God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for every son, brother, father, grandfather who has endured and loved others with the Father's love. Today, O oh God, we lift a stone from the stream bed of living waters to the forehead of the men and boys in our lives, touching each forehead with the sign of your healing for every broken heart hidden from view for every untold story, for the revelation of our Father's love that never leaves nor forsakes. As we lift our hope, your hope of healing for all sons, brothers, fathers, and grandfathers, we pray that they may grow in love to your glory. Hear our prayer, O oh God, as we pray for peace on this Father's Day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Chapel Hill. My name is Kara Coffey, and I'm blessed to be joined today with Mallory and Carrie. Uh, in the back, we have a full house with Pat, Dean, Brian, and Alex. Um, and then our beautiful, if you've seen our Father's Day displays, uh, we have um, Pat, um, sorry, Debbie and Mamie to thank for that. So um, thank you, everyone who makes uh, every service possible. Um, Chapel Hill, are you, are you ready to worship? Then you better stand up because I, where I'm, I, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm look, I'm looking for the living God this morning. Are you? Yeah. All right. Let's let's sing. Let's sing to him. Invite him to come and uh, be with us this morning. One, two, three, four. I'm coming with the heart of worship. I'm bringing in a brand new song. I'm live to see the unthinkable. I'm ready for a miracle. Hearts praying for a fresh encounter. Souls looking to the living God. I'm ready for a real revival. Oh, Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, fall in this place. Fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. We're on the edge of a new beginning. God, we know you have so much more. We're looking to a new horizon. We're praying for your rain to pour. An overflowing of true redemption, an overflowing of your kingdom. We're ready for a real revival. Oh, Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, flow in this place, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come. Just receive it, receive your freedom. Oh, can you feel it? Heaven is reaching. Oh, can you hear it? Our God is speaking. Oh, can you see it? He's got your healing. Oh, just receive it, receive your freedom. Come like a flood, like a fire. Like a flood, like a fire, Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. 
Amen. You may be seated. Today, we remember the 101st anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre, known as Juneteenth. Hundreds of black men and women were killed in a historic incident of racial violence. In the community of Greenwood, a thriving black community nicknamed Black Wall Street, a generation of black wealth was extinguished. Today, we lift our prayers in commemoration on Juneteenth. Today, we commemorate the end of slavery in America. This day partially reminds us of the progress made. This day also partially reminds us of the progress we made. We celebrate the freedom of black lives in our nation. We grieve that we have not correctly reconciled racism in our nation. You created each person in your image. The two greatest commandments calls us to love you with all our heart, souls, and minds. Then to love our neighbors as ourselves. Your love for us motivates us to love each other. If we do not love each other, then ultimately we have not experienced your love. As much as we commemorate and celebrate Juneteenth, we grieve this day. We mourn that our black brothers and sisters have not been loved as our neighbors. We mourn that our black brothers and sisters have been treated less than created in your image through this history. So Lord, we confess our sins and repent. The healing and reconciliation we desire comes from the gospel. On Juneteenth this year, we ask you to guide our nation May the good news of the gospel motivate us to love each other. May the ideals of our words match the practices of our lives. May a fresh empowerment of your spirit unite us together. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear your will and leading. In Christ's name, amen. amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus left us all by saying, Our the Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we as forgive, forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, the power, and the, power, and the, and the glory, glory forever. Amen. Amen. The priest, peace of the risen Christ is with you. And also and with you. You are invited to turn to the people around you and wave as a sign of graceful greetings this day and wave to our Facebook friends. And then we invite you to stand with us again as we sing Spirit of the Living God.
Good morning, Chapel Hill. Good morning. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. As the scriptures are read, you are invited to sit, stand, sit, or kneel, whichever position creates an attitude of reverence and focus. Hear now these words from Psalm 25. I offer my life to you, Lord. My God, I trust you. Please don't let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies rejoice over me. For that matter, don't let anyone who hopes in you be put to shame. <clears throat> Instead, let those who are treacherous without excuse be put to shame. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. Teach it to me, because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. Lord, remember your compassion and faithful love. They are forever. But don't remember the sins of my youth or my wrongdoing. Remember me only according to your faithful love for the sake of your goodness, Lord. The Lord is good and does the right thing. He teaches sinners which way they should go. God guides the weak to justice, teaching them his way. All the Lord's paths are loving and faithful for those who keep his covenant and, way and laws. Please, for the sake of your good name, Lord, forgive my sins, which are many. Where are the ones who honor the Lord? God will teach them which path to take. They will lead a good life and their descendants will possess the land. The Lord counsels those who honor him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are always looking to the Lord because he will free my feet from the net. Turn to me, God, and have mercy on me because I'm alone and suffering. My troubles, my heart's troubles keep getting bigger. Set me free from my distress. Look at my suffering and trouble. Forgive all my sins. Look at how many enemies I have and how violently they hate me. Please protect my life. Deliver me. Don't let me be put to shame because I take refuge in you. Let integrity and virtue guard me because I hope in you. Please, God, save Israel from all its troubles. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. You may remain seated as we sing, um, Holy Spirit, rain down.
as I've kind of thought about this a little more, life is a learning journey. And in that learning journey, God is faithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is faithful. And so life is a teacher as we experience life. When, when they think about and reflecting on the words of the psalmist, Psalm 25 that was just read, I see in that that this is the psalmist is giving, to, giving of self to God, body, mind, and spirit, trusting God in and for all. Seek, uh, that, that the psalmist is seeking, expressing the seeking of learning and wisdom from God, asking for God, asking for the Lord to make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your past. Lead me in your truth. Teach, teach it to me because you are the God who saves me. I put my hope in you all day long. Verses 4 and 5. And also the psalmist acknowledges that the Lord provides salvation, deliverance, and alleviation from suffering. Do we resonate with that? Do we connect to what the psalmist is saying? Amen. Amen. In fact, my sense is that the sentiments and expressions of the psalmist are often not, are not, are not removed from our own. What I appreciate about the words found in the book of Psalms is that we see the panorama of the human experience, our human experience, our frailties, our joys and our concerns in our journey of life. So we do learn through our experiences, through our relationships, and through our discipleship. Amen? Amen. And so when I think about our life experiences, I believe that they teach us to gain perspective, to practice patient and to cultivate and maintain peace. Are you learning from your life experiences? Amen? Yeah. Every day. Every day. In fact, experience is defined as practical contact, contact with and observation of facts or events. Or it's also encountering or undergoing an event or an occurrence. In fact, we are having an experience right now, amen, as we come together to worship, okay? We've had, we have experiences all the time. So when we think about gaining perspective, we have limited uh, perceptions and understanding. In fact, we have ups and downs, feelings at times that we're tossed to and fro. Our journey is a faith walk. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? So in that, you know, trusting uh, God, trusting that God is in the midst of the challenge that we are facing. And that makes me think that uh, we think about the disciples as they were in the boat. <laughs> you know, in life, Jesus is in the boat with us. Amen? Jesus is in the boat with us. And so, so in that, you know, as we sometimes when we're, we're struggling, we don't see a way. And there's an expression that says making a way out of no way. Making a way out of no way. So, and in fact, through our experience in life, we see providence and redemption at work. Scriptures, uh, scripture reveals God's perspective to, uh, for us. One, and in Colossians 3, 2, it says, set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. And Isaiah says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are, your, are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so the ways are uh, higher than, than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And then Jeremiah says, I know the, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And so I believe that scripture helps us to, to now, you know, gain a perspective because in the moment when we're challenged, sometimes it's hard to see the fuller picture, amen? Sometimes it's hard to see the fuller picture. We, we might pray, Lord, help me to find you in the midst of this situation. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Lord, help me to find you in the midst of this situation. And so over time, we begin to see the situation or, or through our experiences with the lenses or the perspective of God. Amen? 
again, it comes with time. It comes with time in that journey. When we think about practicing patience, <laughs> this is a busy, fast-moving, anxious world with many challenges and worries. True? Yes, it is. It is. And we have action and reaction rhythms, right? We have action and reaction rhythms. But Jesus said in John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. And in fact, you know, as we're now in this season of Pentecost, this is an opportunity for really the spirit, the spirit of God to stir, right? The Ruach to stir amongst us here in these, in these days, okay? But Jesus said, as he told the disciples, as he was the party, he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. So if your tr hearts are troubled this morning, do not let them be troubled, as Jesus says. In fact, there's a prayer that says, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Have you prayed that prayer before? Amen. Amen. Philippians says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Which another way to might say that is, is to let go and to let God. Amen? Amen. Okay. And so, and so there, so again, you know, there's something about, I guess, you know, one of the questions we might ask ourselves is just whenever a, a something happens, at what point do we begin to catch ourselves being impatient, at what point do we start to practice being patient, right? And, and, and you know, such is life. There is always that opportunity to experience that. So perhaps gaining perspective helps us to gain or practice patience, our patience. Our patience can then be a gift to the world as there is need for those to hold a non-anxious presence. Or in other words, for us, as people of God, I believe that we're called to be that non-anxious presence in the world. Amen. Be that non-anxious presence where you are, within the family, within the workplace, within the marketplace, within the community. When I think about cultivating and maintaining peace, what comes to mind, if y'all have ever seen that, that show Seinfeld, is George and Frank Costanza, the father and son characters, okay, in that, in that show. And they, they invoke the expression, serenity now. They call it serenity now. In times when it looks like a blood vessel is about to erupt in any one of them. While we are not sure if by screaming serenity now, that human cry for peace in that moment, that it will bring immediate calm, it does seem to parallel Jesus saying to the wind and the storm, peace be still. But it's God's response bringing his perfect peace to that moment, right? We all cry out to the Lord, right, out of frustration. We all cry out, but yet... God tells us, peace be still. We may not hear it, but that is his hope for us. So perhaps our insights is to recognize the moments when, remembering that Jesus is in the boat with us, that in a moment of challenge and stress, we can say, peace be still. Amen? And we'll say, peace be still. Amen. So as we strive to and uh, as we strive to, uh, to cultivate and maintain our peace, do we over time spend less wallowing and thrashing around in the waters of the storm and, move into our, and then move into floating in the peace over the storm? Do we learn how to know that we know that, that, uh, that we journey with the one who brings calm to the storm? Amen? Amen. So float, <laughs> just float in the midst of it all. So cultivating and maintaining our peace requires awareness. In fact, Proverbs, I thought this was 
a cool, cool thing. Proverbs 15, 18 says, hot, temper, hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. And of course, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends, transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So there, there's something about, you know, this, uh, through these perspectives that really, because, because we serve a living God, because the spirit of the God of the Lord flows in us, that we're calling we're called to transcend beyond that given moment, that challenge. As we think about our relationships, that, that really teach us something in our life journey, our relationships in life teach us to offer and leave room for grace, or I like to think the benefit of the doubt, to be sympathetic or empathetic with others and to learn how to understand and to be understood. So as disciples of, of Jesus, we are given the commandments to love God with all our heart, uh, with, all, with our all, to love our neighbor, okay, other family members, the other, as ourself. And what comes to mind is the prodigal son story found in Luke chapter 15. What I think of, and, 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 and this is, for us on Father's Day, the posture of the father loving both sons and holding the family together. He loves both of these sons and he's holding the family together. In fact, in fact, uh, eat parenting children. This is this may be a commentary on parenting children who are each unique. Right? Our children are not the same. They're wired differently. They're each unique. And in fact, if you parented, you know, the, the first child at five years old, when the second one got to five years old, it might have been a different deal. Are y'all maybe experiencing and seeing some differences, right? Okay. Because they're all unique. We see that, that in this story, the, 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 the son that is strong-willed and insisting on his way, the father's holding that. And then the compliant and rule-following child, the father's holding that. And when it's all said and done, the father is about bringing redemption to the whole situation, right? The, the, to keep the family intact and so that each may see the value of each other. Amen? Okay. And such it is for us as, as parents, but such it is for us as the people of God, as the church. Amen? Because we are a family here. We are the family of God. And we're all wired differently, aren't we? We all think differently. We all have different life experiences, and yet it all comes together. All this diversity of our life experiences, our lived experiences, come together in this place, and we learn how to be one family, the people of God, or as God often calls us to unity. Amen? Unity in Christ. And then we, we see that our relationships in life teach us to offer and leave room for grace. We have the opportunity to practice reserving judgment and assuming the worst of the intention of the other's uh, behaviors, uh, the others perhaps based on behaviors, their behaviors or words or actions. Viewing the behaviors of others in a positive light, creating space uh, for grace to abound, grace which is unmerited favor, and just reserving judgment for God, leaving the judgment to God. In Acts chapter 20, it says, but I do not, Paul writes, I do not, uh, I mean, uh, it's written, I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So we hold this grace through this ministry, through our work, okay? Uh, the ministry of reconciliation, we hold this grace, right, that is to be shared with others. And, and so in that, then, the grace we exhibit with others is our witness to others, amen? 
The grace we exhibit to others is our witness to others. Which then leads us to be sympathetic or empathetic with others. To be kind and uh, genuine and compassionate with kind and genuine and compassionate words that can bring comfort to those who are grieving, struggling, hurting, etc. Sympathy is understanding between people, common feeling to feel with and to be in solidarity with. And that to be empathetic is the ability to understand and to share the feelings of another, understanding how the, the, the other feels out of the same or similar experience. And here, you know, in, in First Peter it says that finally all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, tender heart, and humble mind. In Romans it says rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And then in Matthew it says, so whatever you wish for others uh, would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Not too long ago, the Domino's, we, we ordered Domino's pizza. We live right over here on the other side of, up the street from the security service bank, and the Domino's pizza is right up the street from John Jay High School. And Domino's Pizza's promise is what? They deliver it to you within what? 30 minutes. Well, that day, the pizza showed up 90 minutes later. <laughs> and we were wondering, where's the pizza driver? And we didn't call. We didn't, you know, we didn't get on the phone ready to yell at someone. But the guy, the, the young man finally showed up. And in fact, I was in, on a call in the other room. But I could hear this going on as they, as they uh, answered the door. And the first thing out of this young man's mouth was, I'm so sorry. He was so apologetic. And he says, I am the only one working, making deliveries right now. So we gave him a good tip. <laughs> That's a picture right there, isn't it? Right? Because I could hear this from the other room, and I was just trying to imagine how might this young man feel and may we have been the house that just simply received him with grace and even blessed him where maybe he was getting yelled at along the way. Amen? So that becomes a witness to those around us. And then how, how do our relationships, out of that, that we learn how to understand and to be understood. People who are good at understanding others pick up on emotional cues from, from uh, often from body language, tone of voice, and other nonverbal elements of communication. You gotta really pay attention, right? Or we listen well to what people are saying, actively checking their understanding. A lot of things happen just simply out of misunderstandings, don't they? Huh? In fact, they can get out of control. They can really go to places that were never intended. And then showing sensitivity towards others and understanding their perspectives. Again, we all see differently, right? We all have different lenses. We all have different lived experiences. And so I think a big job for us as the church is to actually practice understanding each other. Amen? In fact, it seems that Paul seems to write a lot about that and sorts that, those things out. So that everyone, it's about the unity of the body. So seeking to understand others and seeking to be understood by others expands us and helps us to grow and become richer in grace and compassion, which carries through our, into our relationships with all persons. In Proverbs it says, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. So through our practicing understanding each other, we actually become sharper, amen? Another way we maybe say becoming sharper is we become more mature, right? Which means that we're called to live into the fullness, the fullness, the full stature of Christ as his church. Amen? Amen. All right? Are we looking for that? Do we want that? Are we striving for that? Amen? Let it be. And then lastly, our discipleship or faith development and life teaches us the power of prayer, the wisdom of scripture, and above all, that God is faithful. Our spiritual development 
speak God speaking to us through our experiencing and then in, in the Methodist in the Methodist movement in, in the Methodist theology the means of grace the means of grace are the ways in which God works invisibly in disciples quickening strengthening and and confirming faith so believers use them to open their hearts and lives to God's work in them. And we see those through works of piety. The individual practices of that would be through our prayer, fasting, searching the scriptures, and healthy living. The communal practice would be our worship, which is right now, Holy Communion, Baptism, and Christian conferencing. And then another aspect of works of, of, of means of grace are our works of mercy. Our individual practice would be doing good, visiting the sick, Visiting the imprisoned, feeding and clothing those in need, earning, saving, giving. And our communal practices would be seeking justice. Amen? And then when we think about the power of prayer, how many of you experience the power of prayer? Praise God. That's right. Our communication to God. When we listen to others, we have reasons to pray, don't we? Amen. And so in that... You know, pray, uh, in Ephesians it says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that, uh, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. We're called to pray for each other. And then in Thessalonians it says, rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for that is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then, of course, we gain wisdom through the scriptures. Proverbs says, do not forsake wisdom, she will, uh, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it, uh, though it costs all you have, get understanding. And Proverbs 11 says, the fruit of the wise, of the righteous, is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. Wise. 35 years ago, I was needing a job. I was at home feeling worried, frustrated, and overwhelmed. And I cried out to God, shaking my hands in the air, saying, Lord, I need a job. Have you ever cried out to God in desperation? Right? We've been there. We just cry out to God in desperation. In fact, if we cry out to God, I don't even think he's offended by that. And, and because when we read again the Psalms, we see those expressions of that humanity really crying out to God. And perhaps that was my serenity now moment. <laughs> you know, I needed it. But on the desk was a book by, uh, that, by Charles Swindoll that was given to me by my Aunt Lola just you know, a short time before that moment. And I opened, I don't think in, at that time when I received the book, I might not have opened the cover, but I opened the cover and I saw the inscription reading and this, it, said, it said, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. And if I remember correctly, I think the next day I got a call for an interview. Amen? It's really set a lot of things in motion thereafter. God is faithful. God is faithful. So again, we learn through our experiences, our relationships, and our discipleship. Lord, remember your compassion and faithful love there forever, as verse 6 says in the psalm. All the Lord's paths are loving and faithful to those who keep his covenant and laws as it says in verse 10. 
So on this day, brothers and sisters, we thank, so on this day, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Yes, we sing, great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for leading us, accompanying us on this, on our learning journey. To close, another time I was trying to meet a work deadline and feeling I was not going to make it. But in that moment, I caught myself and I moved from a position of worry and I have invoked this, this thing. I was, I was saying these words. I started to say as I was trying to finish this work to meet the deadline. Keep the faith, finish the race. Keep the faith, finish the race. So brothers and sisters, let us carry with us on our learning journeys the words of the Apostle Paul that he gave to his protege Timothy in passing on his ministry legacy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abel. Thank you, Abel. Um, I don't know about you all, but my hope is in the Lord because he is faithful and compassionate. And I will turn my eyes upon the Lord. Thank you. This uh, next song is a new song. It's called Endless Praise. And while we're singing it, you're invited to sing. You're invited to listen. Or if you want to come up to the prayer rail, you're invited to do that as well. I'm sure Abel or Barbara would also pray with you um, if, um, if, if that's what you're needing in this moment. I can't wait for eternity Join the song they're already singing Holy, holy, holy are you Just to bow down before your throne, see your face, I'll cry out, because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of kings, Jesus, I can't wait for eternity Join the song they're already singing Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord Just to bow down before your throne See your face, I'll cry out Because you're holy, holy, holy are you Jesus, King of Kings, Jesus, King of Kings, Jesus, Majesty. Let's sing that again. Jesus, King of Kings, Jesus. Standing with those who have heard well done Proclaiming forever that you're the one Who's faithful, faithful, faithful are you
voice of glory we sing once more worthy 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 lord forever forever worthy 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 lord another glimpse of glory we sing once more worthy 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 lord Will the children come forward with their parents for a blessing? With their parents? <laughs> <laughs> What did you say? There's no slide for this. No slide? Yes, ma'am. Well, how are they going to respond? <laughs> We're going to magic. I will read words. everything, I guess. Running, jumping, falling, laughing, singing, dancing, climbing, our children are our joy. Amen. Today we are all children gathered to praise and worship you, loving God. Rolling, smiling, hugging, shouting, crying, cheering, painting, toddling, drawing, our children are our joy. Today we are all children of God gathered to bless our children. Short and tall, thin and thick, dark and light, bright and full of smiles. Changing and growing, our children are our joy. Today we pause to let them know how much we love them. We pause to remind ourselves of our promises to them to guard 
guard, guide, and defend them, to protect them from danger seen and unseen, to live holy lives in front of them, to never stop trying to be spiritually alive members of the church and ambassadors for Christ everywhere we go. Let us pray together. Oh, I will pray. <laughs> Loving God, bless us that we may be a blessing to our children. Help us remember who we are and from where we have come. Help us remember the things you have done for us in the past so we can teach them to our children. May we give them hope and enthusiasm for the future. May we give them openness to your holy message of forgiveness, grace, and love. May they too walk to walk in the paths of righteousness. May your word live in them and for generations to come. Hear this prayer we offer today. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Will our ushers come forward, please? Let us pray. Generous God, you are always with us, always caring for us, always drawing us closer together. We are so grateful for your loving presence. We bring our gifts before you today that this offering may reach out in love to your people everywhere. Amen. Amen. pictures with your father or for your father. Uh, Priscilla Circle will meet Tuesday, June the 21st, 11 a.m. at Acadiana. APOT will meet uh, June the 23rd, 11.30. Uh, the Kairos Walk on the Ru Ruben Torres Unit is coming up on July the 7th and the 10th. And don't forget to sign up for a 30-minute prayer slot from Marjorie outside or to purchase a meal for one of the inmates for $5. Um, dust off your boots because we're having Roundup again. Roundup will be sun Sunday, August the 28th, and y'all come. Now, receive this blessing. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers. May God bless you and give you his peace. And as children of the Spirit, let us be a community of peace sharing signs of kindness and love with one another and our neighbors. As we are sent in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Chapel, go forth, be blessed. We'll see you next week. Spirit of God. <laughs>